Hello, my name is Teresa and I'm a comic artist and illustrator and in this video I'm going to share my tools for pacing comics. Before I start, let me tell you what this is not. This is not a recipe video where I will tell you how many panels, words or actions you have to show per page or scene. I will be talking about two things in this video. First, I will talk about how I go about making decisions about pacing and secondly, I would talk about how you alter pacing in comics and I would separate this into nine basic tips. So first, how do you make decisions about pacing? How do you know if a scene is too slow or too fast? Well, it depends on the tone and the end goal of your scene. So here's my first tip. Avoid the two R's, rushing and rambling. I'm naturally a rusher, which means I tend to go too quickly. I skip parts of the story, relying too much on the reader's ability to fill in the blanks. And I also don't stop to savor some key moments. This results in readers being unsatisfied and confused. So please don't rush, take your time, show readers all the information they need to enjoy and understand the story. On the other side of the spectrum, we have ramblers. This is less typical in comic artists because we don't want to draw more than we have to, but it can happen to writers where they become too wrapped up in making sure the reader has and retains all the information. And then the story becomes a sort of lecture on world building or a constant over delivering of basic information. As a result, the story becomes tedious to read. And if this is you, I just want you to think back to a teacher that rumbled loads and realize how pointless that is if your aim is to achieve engaged readers. So yeah, tip number one, avoid the two R's, rumbling and rushing. Pacing is about engagement. And engagement is a lot about emotion. Pacing is therefore a way to control what you want the reader to feel. So let's talk about feelings and emotions, all right? My second tip is use pace to create the right emotion in your readers. Fast paced scenes are good for generating intense emotions such as excitement, fear, or a burst of laughter. And a slow paced scene is good to generate a feeling of compassion, anticipation, intrigue, or maybe to give the reader time to think about a mystery. Combining both is a great way to generate interest in a story. A classic example of a scene that combines both fast and slow paces is a jump scare. Jump scares start with a very slow pace, often showing you a calm and quiet environment. During this slow pace section of the jump scare, you feel dread and stress and you know something's going to happen, but you can't tell what is going to happen or when. It is this uncertainty of what's going to happen mixed with the feeling of something is going to happen what makes the slow section interesting. The fast section of a jump scare, on the other hand, is meant to release the tension accumulated and give a sense of relief that is very satisfying. Getting the balance right between the two is what makes good jump scares and makes the story thrilling and exciting. If done wrong, it simply spoils the story. For instance, if overdone, the slow pace rise in tension scenes can be very ineffective because readers can get exhausted. You get that, oh man, come on, this is ridiculous type reaction, you know, like you're, you're tired of it. And they, you disconnect emotionally. So then the fast pace follow up does nothing for you because there is no tension to be released. You just disconnect it. Another danger is having a bad balance of slow and fast paced scenes. If too many scenes are slow, as it often happens in drama, science fiction and thrillers, readers can get disconnected and bored. But the solution is not necessarily to have all scenes go fast, as it sometimes happens in action stories because that is just confusing and it creates this sense of disbelief. I mean, how many times have you watched a very frantic, fast-paced action movie and just wonder, like, where did that guy come from? How did they get there? And you're just confused by the whole thing. So finding the right balance between slow build-ups and fast releases of emotion is key to creating a thrilling story. Okay, third tip is know your genre and know your readers. The tricky thing about this whole emotion and pacing thing is that people have different thresholds for how much emotion is too much. I, for instance, disconnect from long joke setups very quickly, so I don't care for punchlines. But I can hold tension for jump scare for ages. And that's why I love horrors, but I'm not so keen on comedies. I hardly ever watch them. And that's because the emotional demands of that genre don't fit my thresholds. In short, you cannot please everybody, but at least you can make sure that you hit the sweet spot where fans of the genre can enjoy it. Study the genre you're trying to work in and look at the usual pacing, then use that information to base your own story. Okay, so let's move on to the next section of tips, because now you know what you want, you know what genre you're looking at, you know what type of pacing is typical of that genre. How do you control the pacing now? 
I will give you some quick tips in three different areas. The first area is art style, the second is page composition, and the third is lettering and writing. So let's talk about art style first. My fourth tip is add the right amount of detail. Every line in a drawing is a piece of information that needs to be read, air quotations for read, but basically the busier and detail a style is, the slower the eyes of the reader are going to move from panel to panel because they have a lot of information, visual information to take in. Detail is great to make a drawing concrete and make the world and character feel solid. Plus, detail realistic drawings have the wow effect that attracts many readers. But too much realistic detail is not always good, as it may cause readers fatigue. Art style is, in this sense, the equivalent to descriptions in prose. Fantasy books, for instance, both in prose and comics, tend to have very detailed visual and sensory information. And even though I love fantasy, I sometimes skim extra long descriptions or glance at the establishing shots because I get tired of all the detail. One common way to address this problem in comics is by using just one big establishing shot, and then use minimalistic backgrounds for the rest of the scene. So you spend a while looking at the initial illustration, but then the pace picks up after that establishing shot and you still keep that strong sense of where you are. The advantage of more minimalistic drawings is that they read very quickly. And even though they are not as concrete as very detailed illustrations, they give readers a chance to fill in the blanks and to project into this imaginary world and characters whatever they have in their own head, to personalize this narrative to their own taste. Typical example, when I'm reading a book and they say, this person is attractive, I stop reading the description. I just picture an attractive person that for me would be attractive. Because if they then describe something that I don't find attractive, then it doesn't work for me. So sometimes skipping these descriptions or detailed drawings is a good idea if you want the person that is reading to project their own taste and their own vision of the world into the story a little bit. Of course, this defeats the purpose of fantasy. You want to be transported into a different world, not to see your third grade teacher's face when you visualize Professor Snape in your head. And another disadvantage of less detailed and realistic styles is that they don't create the right setup for some types of story. It's like having a Game of Thrones film with a bunch of props from a school play. It just doesn't have the wow factor that an epic fantasy needs. In a nutshell, Detail affects pace. The less detail, the faster the pace. The more detail, the longer it takes to process the panel. But in some genres, like epic fantasy, this detail is required to bring to life the world they depict. So some genres, by definition, are going to be a little bit slower. Moving on to page composition. The obvious one here is number of panels per page, and the less obvious is panel size. So my fifth tip is use less panels to go faster and more panels to go slower. The more panels per page or scene, the slower the reader feels the story is going. When it comes to pages, every time you turn a page, you get a small hit. When reading, the only interactive action you control is flipping the page or clicking for the next page. And this can be very engaging in itself. You also get it like a sort of false sense of progression. And manga does this a lot, where you commonly have four or five panels per page and then you flip to the next thing. European comics, on the other hand, do very little of this and they have as many panels they can per page because albums in Europe come out maybe twice a year and they want to deliver as much story as possible in this limited amount of pages. On to panel size. Tip number six is to use bigger panels to slow down the narrative. Basically, larger panels make readers stop and look at them for longer. And so they're like slowing down time in comics. For example, a double page spread for a, of a forest invites the reader to take time looking at this landscape, whereas a 20 panel page implies that every one of those actions happen very quickly. This one is a bit less intuitive, so let me show you an example for Blankets by Craig Thompson. This is a comic his brother draws inside the comic, so this is like very metafictional. And the pacing is very different to that of his own comic, which is very interesting. This is a page that his brother has done with a lot of quick moments that amount to that build-up that I was talking about for punchlines. And then the quick punchline at the end. So this is the perfect timing for jokes as, as it is for jump scares. So it's like the slow build-up, you're looking at it, you're trying to anticipate something and then it surprises you. And that is the punchline at the end. Another good example is this other page from the same comic, Blankets. The last panel gives an impression of a moment where time is standing still. 
It's a bigger panel on the one hand, which is exactly what I'm talking about, but it also has other things going on for it, which is less detail. So it means we read it faster, but we're still stuck in that panel because it's big. And it has less text to read, which takes me to my last point, which is writing and lettering. Tip number seven is use text to guide the eyes. Text plays a massive role in pacing. In comics, uh, large blocks of text require long time reading, so the less text in a panel, the faster the pace. Letters can control the pace by breaking text blocks into different captions and bubbles and spacing them out to make the readers move faster across the page. But since I'm not a letterer, I will not go into this much. Just notice the difference between the feel of this panel and this other panel, okay? They have the same amount of text, roughly, and the same amount of information, but the first one feels much faster, doesn't it? The speech bubbles in the first one forces the reader to move out of the panel quite quickly, while the second one invites the reader to read the words and then look at the illustration. So that takes longer. However, when I say writing, I don't just mean the number of words. I mean also the transitions and how much of each scene you show. So my eighth tip is about writing and is to pay attention to your transitions. Let's look at another example. The first page here has a slow pace because we have a lot of moment to moment transitions. We are seeing every moment of the character, so it feels slower. Most transitions in this page are moment to moment transitions. I will make a video about transitions soon and I will link it here, but for now just know that moment to moment means that there is no jumping in time, each panel is the next logical moment in the same scene. In the second one, on the other hand, we go from one action, the shouting of the teacher, to another action, which is everyone shutting up. So time moves much faster. So the more moments you show in a scene, the slower the pace is, like in a film. So yeah, this is basically the same principle as in film. The more frames you have per second, the slower the pace is, and the less frames you have per second, the faster the pace is. And this works exactly the same in comics. So transitioning from moment to moment all the time will make your story go slower. Transitioning from action to action or scene to scene will make your story go faster. And finally, my ninth tip is iterate. Pace is part of tone and style. And if you're not specifically trying to copy another story's pacing, then there is an experimental side to it. Therefore, I would recommend you find a way to visualize the pages in your comic and actually see how the pacing works. As an artist, I find thumbnails are the most effective way of doing this, but if you can't draw, then use stick figures or photographs, but put it down on paper to test it and then make changes using the tips until it feels right. And that's it! Those are my 9 tips to control pacing in comics. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you next week for the next video. Bye-bye.